Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. Today we're doing something completely different from what we typically do. And that's because it's such an extraordinary opportunity for us to come here to the Marconi Automotive Museum. The quick background is this is a family that has created massive wealth through the years. And you're about to see somewhere in the neighborhood of about $60 million in vehicles. That's right, $60 million in vehicles. But what I find so fascinating about the Marconis is they're very philanthropic. As a matter of fact, everything we're about to show you, they donated all their vehicles to their museum and the museum is all about supporting at-risk kids. But we're gonna do the fun part of what they do, which is we're gonna go do a walkthrough in two parts, by the way, because it's way too much to take in in one shot. So we're gonna go through and today we're gonna focus on their muscle cars, and in a second episode, we're gonna focus in on their exotic cars, and we're gonna take two of my favorite cars of all time out for a drive. So let's go in, I wanna introduce you to John Marconi, show you some of the vehicles, we'll go for a ride, and then I promise you, you're not gonna to wanna to miss the second episode. So let's go, let's go say hi to John. So here's the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> Legend in my own mind, yeah, Sean. Yeah, right, hi, right. Welcome. So, thanks for doing this with us. For one, I mean, it's it's. I know you keep thanking me for the help we're giving you, but for us, it's, it's been fun getting to know you. But it's also, you know, being a geek like you for cars, to walk into this room and see, as you've said, somewhere in the neighborhood of about sixty million dollars in vehicles. It's pretty astounding. So let's let's start maybe. Maybe it's easier to start here and kind of walk down and you can give me the brief story on, you know, on the muscle cars here. Well, you know, like Do we you call said, a Thunderbird a muscle car, by the way? You know, I, I would say it's a muscle car. You know, it was V8 of the 50s. And, you know, it was sp the most sporty car out there at its time. Yeah. You know, next to the Corvette, which is on the other side of the, the spectrum. Yeah. But I, I would call it a muscle car. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay, okay. Do you have, of, of all the muscle cars here, do you have a favorite personal one? Well, I mean, obviously it's the Hemi Cuda my yeah. son and I built, but you know, that's, that's the, you know, that's the, that's the, the epitome of the muscle car where it maxed out and where yeah. it died yeah. was within those that two year period. But yeah, the muscle, that was the Hemi was the ultimate that everybody wanted. Which by the way, you guys, that's the one muscle car we actually are going to take for a drive. Absolutely. Today. So give me the kind of the one minute on each one of these. The, we call it a thunder, I've always called them since I was a kid, a thunder chicken, but the Thunderbird is, you know, you see Suzanne Summers in, in a couple of movies in it, and it was one of those iconic cars. You drive it today and it still stops traffic, especially with the, the mm -hmm. turquoise color of the white top. Yeah. It, it's just one of the spoke wheels. It's just, it's an iconic car when you roll out, no matter, it crosses all the dimensions of cars. Yeah. People look at it and they go, wow, and it turns their heads. I agree, especially in that yeah, color. It, it's combo. just, it's a neat piece. How about this? What are we looking at here? 68 Mustang. Um, this was bought by a gentleman by the name of Ed Fuller. It's got a unique story. I'll try to abbreviate as much as I can. Um, Ed bought the car. It was the, it was the Econo model, uh, crank up windows, six cylinder, automatic transmission, one mirror, you know, the, the bottom of the barrel, steel wheels, yeah. not, you know, not painted steel wheels. He goes into uh, the military, gets stationed over in Germany, sends the car over to Germany drives all over Germany in American sports car, just having a ball, you know, with, with, you know, Marines and 19, you know, 20 years old, just going crazy yeah. all over the place. He gets back and he's a security guard for, I think, I believe it was Hyatt. Okay. They had three, three hotels. Go forward 55 years. Ed is now president of Hyatt International and is responsible for opening 500 hotels. So Ed's now has a lot of money. So what happened was Ed, took it and put $135,000 into this 68. Now, it's a notchback. Nobody would do that. I mean, yeah. Wellwood brakes, uh, you know, it's got, it's got a 302 that's a rocket. It, it, you know, it's got all the ATF, all this, everything going on in it, it, it can, late model air conditioning, all the stuff. Yeah. So what happens is, unfortunately, Ed gets sick. Can't drive the car. So Ed sends it out to five different museums, old school letter, and said, are you interested in the car? And I jumped on it because we didn't even know what the car looked like. So our appraiser went down there and they, they took a look at the car and he calls me and said, John, you better get down here. I said, what's well, a 68 Mustang? So I go down to see the car at Ed's and I went, oh my gosh. I mean, the paint's so deep you can walk through it yeah. and walk out of it. So yeah. there is where it sits. 
Ed donated to us, we're the only ones that responded. And the reason he donated to us is because he did to the foundation. He did not want the car taken apart. Everybody would have put all these parts onto a notchback, built a you know, bullet replica and done the routine. Right. And he did not want that to happen. Yeah. So I have an agreement, we have agreement with the estate and with Ed, he's still that around. It stays as that is. it stays as is and nobody jacks with it and nobody's gonna peel this one apart. It's a blast Beautiful. to drive. I'll bet it it's is. It's unbelievably fast. The color's extraordinary yeah. on it. Okay, this one, what do we have? 69 Boss 302. Uh, this I've owned, um, my, my family and I have owned this probably for 30, 34, 35 years. <clears throat> it's a real 68 or 69 Boss 302, the four light, which is always my, my favorite Mustang. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, uh, it started out with a 302. The 302 is at home on the rack. And uh, it's a long story, but we ended up putting a 351 Cleveland in it. And there's where the mistake started. You got a motor that's 60 pounds heavier over the front axle. You took this beautiful, as I've driven the Cudas and I've driven you know, Camaros and everything else, this Mustang is the gazelle of handling of that period car, 68, 69. Yeah. Okay, it just is. I yeah. don't know why. It's the way the geometry set up, all the stuff. Yeah. So when I plopped this big motor in, it just screwed up everything. We ended up having to put bigger springs in, um, you know, Coney adjustables, which they had factory and also some big sway bars to get the front under control because now the car's got an inherent push because it's so heavy. Sure. We took a little bit sure. of that out of it, but we, we, we screwed it up. But the bottom line is I wanted a, a motor they could just go out and thrash, have a good time, but that matching numbers motors on the shelf, the, the holy grail, and so I could always put it back in. I love that you saved that. I love that, I love that you held the on to it. The biggest part of that was finding an air cleaner because all the kids, you know, there's only 1,300 of these built, 1,300. So they get the air cleaner, put a standard air cleaner on it. So they get the induction they hear it and they throw the air cleaner out. Those air cleaners now are about six, $7,000 if you can oh find one. Oh my God. So I hunted for crazy. almost two years to finally find the stock air cleaner wow. with it. Okay, so here's a super cool one. It's a Survivor 428 Cobra Jet. Um, it's got a 428 in it, obviously, uh, four speed. Um, we just got done putting a clutch in it and dialing it all in and um, cooling system and, and went through it and hoses. Um, it's, it was the, it evolved from the 302 or the, uh, the Boss 302 70 to the 428 and they, they had them in different versions with cowl induction and all the other stuff on it. Yeah. But I, I, it, back then, I know you're looking, this is Survivor. Look at the red interior with an orange car. Is that a train wreck? It's so bad. It is. It is so. It is so bad. Even by today's standards, it's horrible. No, that's awful. It, it's awful, but it, it's it's just. But it's but it's indicative of that time period too, where it's like, man, let's throw hey this man, color with it, this hey color. Hey man, it's the seventies. Take another hit. We'll yeah. Put, we'll, yeah. You'll, you'll be just fine. It's great. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? So this is what 71, 72? It's a 71, 351 Ram Air Mach One. Now next to the Mustang Two, four cylinder. This is probably the ugliest Mustang that ever was. I'm so glad that I didn't have I, to I, say I, that because I, I couldn't okay. agree more. <laughs> I maybe get chastised, we'll get beat up on this video, I know. I'm starting, it's starting to grow on me. You saw the one Bond movie, I think it was Diamonds Are Forever, and he wrote, raced this all over the place, chased out, trying to outrun the cops in Las Vegas yeah. with a beautiful blonde, I don't remember what her name was. Oh. But this was the car they, they, they ran with. The interesting thing about this is a survivor car. We haven't touched it. Wow. Um, I've got the door panels off because we're working on those, cleaning them up to put them back on. It's got a, it's a 351 Ram Air and it's truly a working Ram Air. And even on the 71s, this was the last of the muscle car period. 71 is when the official right death, the the death happened. happened. Well, right. that and smog laws and yeah, all the other crap yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. fuel was out of, out of sight. Not yeah. like it is today. Now this is, these are matching-ish <laughs> Kudas. And this one's your wife's, right? Yes. Yeah, this is, this is Michelle's car. Vincent was working with a guy named Julius and who is uh, Steyer, that is the, um, the foremost Mopar restorer in the world, in my opinion. My wife walked down and Vincent was working on it for Julius and Dave and walked down and, and said, wow, I like that car. She falls in love with it and we could see it in her eyes. So I called Julius when she got back up from our race shop down at the house. I said, hey, you wanna sell the car? So my own story is I bought the car and we gave it to her for Christmas. So now this one is yours. This is the 340 Cuda we got before that. And we fell in love with it. And you know, it was, again, it was a, a lightweight front end. The car handled like a go-kart as they do. It had the big bars on it. I, you know me, I, everything's vertical for me. I, I like to go handle and G-force. And when we drive it, you'll notice it's herky-jerky on the bottom because I mean the pistons are, 
you know, pistons are about this big around yeah, right here. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah. It, it's it's a, it doesn't like it, cruising. It doesn't like cruising. The cam's a little rumpity bumpity for yeah. it. It's a little too much. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we had to put a dual disc clutch in it to hold the hold the, the stuff together. Yeah. And the thing is, that we put a B body rear end in the back, so it looks like it's mini tubbed with the wider wheels and everything else, and we put the cop hubcaps on. But it's just a so, lot of fun. So I know we're going to take this one out for a drive, but there's some other muscle car stuff in here we need to talk about. Like this being personally my favorite of the lot is is this GT350. This is set up for racing, right? So it's yes. not like a, it's not a stock GT350. No. So this car, now you said before when we were talking, didn't you say you raced this car for about 20 years? Yeah, fifth, about 18 years. I was looking back, about 18 years we raced this car. I'm out at Palm Springs thinking I'm the badass on the block. I'm the big strutting chicken, you know, and I'm, I'm on the pole by two and a half seconds. I got everybody. I was just lightweight and it was not a big deal. I look back and I see the orange car and it's Tangerine, his Trans Am. This is Fulmer's Trans Am. And Gurney was right behind him and didn't know it. So I see, you know, and then the next lap, they're coming up. I go around the hairpin and like, there are like 12 cars behind me and they were 100, 300 yards behind me before. I go, oh, I'm deep shit. Yeah. All of a sudden they split apart going down the back straightaway and it's Gurney and Fulmer and they're coming up on me and I'm just going, oh, I'm, in, I'm about to be the meat in a shit sandwich. It's going to be a bad deal. <laughs> so they hit me right before the end. I start breaking. I'm getting checked up, ready for the turn. I'm trying to figure out whether to go inside or outside, block the corner so they aren't getting around me, but they were, they were so fast. As soon as I looked in the rearview mirror and thought, they split, went right around me and split me going into turn one, paired up and then took off. Game over. Game over. And I have, uh, even today I got That's goosebumps. That's really funny, I love I got that. my. I got flogged by the two greatest guys in the planet. That's okay. That's, that's never a bad thing. It's an honor. All right, let's let's show a couple more, and then because uh, I know you guys are used to us typically, you know, doing some driving. So we're going to definitely do some driving in this guy. But there's a couple of other muscle cars in the bunch here, obviously, right? Yeah. That, uh, this is a real kit night rider. That is car, the right? that is the real deal. This is. I, mean, I remember the show yeah, as a kid. Yeah, I mean, you know, Hasselhoff. Like I used to watch the kid. I, I mean, he was he show. was every young lady's heartthrob, you know. And I mean, everybody wanted to be like him. The guy's what six six, good looking dude. Yeah. Is, yeah. is this the barbecue and honey car? That's a barbecue and honey car. Yeah. yeah. That's a that's a barbacoa car. Yeah. I, I like bar I like barbecue sauce. And I like honey. The short version is, upset wife, bashes in all the windows and dumps barbecue, dumps sauce, barbecue sauce and honey, honey inside the cab. The and there was a rod that went through this Mr. Rod went through the Mr. Side of the block. And uh, so anyway, I imagined I ended up getting the car, swapped all the race parts from that car because that's a bond or commemorative. We couldn't cut it up and put a roll cage in it and put them on this car. So before we drive the Cuda, this is this is one of my all time favorite cars. The Charger for me is just just a regular old 68 to 70 chargers, one of my favorite all time. Doesn't get any better. The design is so yep. beautiful on these. But this is an actual, this is a real General Lee, right? This isn't a replica. This is the real deal. This was a, uh, the promotional car that ran on tour. This is the whole cast, This is the right? whole cast, yeah. This is the whole cast of the, of the, of the show. Um, the car has been triple cleared, so it's got a lot of clear on it, so right. people don't, so these don't, are preserved, don't be, forever preserved forever. But the interesting part about this is you take a look at everybody. You know, Sean, can you guess what the favorite signature is on this thing? Daisy Duke. Of course, Daisy Duke. Oh, of course. <laughs> She's the only one I really cared you, about. You gotta on love the show, this. You gotta love honest. this signature. You no want to? You want to touch it? We have a no touch policy. I you already, touch I already it? did when you weren't looking. You snuck it. <laughs> <laughs> You're messing with my girlfriend. All right, so let's let's do this. Let's go. I mean, there's there's just it's so funny trying to actually now the reality of it's hitting me of yeah. how much there is in here. So well, let's go. We're gonna pull the coot out. We'll put some cameras in. We'll go for a drive in that guy. Then we're gonna come back in, and I want to. We can't walk everyone through every exotic car here, but what I would like to do when we come back in is there's a good handful that have unbelievable stories. You to pick them. Yeah, I've already picked a few of them, but we're going to go for a drive in the Cuda right now, you guys. I hope you're enjoying this because this is a this is a truly extraordinary facility full of amazing vehicles. But right now, it's uh, it's time for the Cuda. Let's get it done. We're going to go for a drive, you guys.
to be in good shape. Wow, it's really all the, like, that's all original gauges, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, everything. And then that's add-on stuff? Yes. Yeah. And there's a guy that builds the tacks, the tachometer that goes into the oil, the gauges over here. So we had a little mini tag rather than bolt one to the top, make it a little too, you know, non-stock. It's kind of a OEM, like it's a tack in here. It's not real accurate, but it gives you an idea. Sure. You know, you're at 500 RPMs before you blow it up. comes spin. up on the cam and it just it, it, it lifts up and lights them as soon as you get the weight transfer goes away it neutrals itself they light it, it, it spins yeah. them All right, you guys, you kind of get a sense of what's going on here. I can't recommend enough to spend a couple bucks. The money goes to a good cause, which is helping out kids. And we all know kids are the future of this world. So I highly recommend come down here, check out some amazing cars, say hello to John and his family, have your mind blown while doing something good. Please come down and support the Marconi Automotive Museum. I promise you, you will be knocked out. And by the way, are you not blown away by what they have here? I could go on and on and on. I'm gonna stop here and simply say, thanks for hanging and watching what we do, and I will see you in the next episode. All right, you guys, later.